Okay, so now let's start with uh, human diseases and some concepts related to human diseases. Now, diseases, uh, you should be uh, knowing a lot of the diseases names, you should be knowing the pathogen names and you should be knowing how they affect our body. Okay, and after you're done with that, you also have some concepts and you should be fully thorough with them. Fine, so let's start with it. Okay, so starting with immunity, you have to learn the two types of immunity. Active immunity refers to the immunity which you gain from your own body, like by the T memory cells and the B memory cells which are present inside your body. Then passive immunity is the type of immunity you get by taking an anti-serum, which is basically serum from other sources uh, uh, instead of your body. And, and both of them have their own uses. However, active immunity is more preferred because it's natural. Passive immunity is there for fighting with uh, deadly diseases. Okay, and th these both should be kept in mind along with this uh, flowchart. So moving on, we next go on to innate immunity. Now, innate immunity is divided into anatomical barriers which uh, consists of skin and mucosa, physiological barriers which consists of fever, pH of body and the secretions. Then we have the cellular barrier which consists of two parts. The first part is phagocytic cells and the second part is non-phagocytic cells. The phagocytic cells consist of monocytes, neutrophils and macrophages. The non-phagocytic cells consisted of natural killer cells. Next, the, so next we have the cytokine barriers. These are proteins which are secreted for uh, protection against uh, various diseases. Example of this is interferons. Active immunity is immunity provided by the memory T cells which keep track of antigens and provide a stronger secondary response called as anamnestic response. Next, let's go on to the immune system in our body. Now, the human immune system consists of lymphoid organs, lymphoid tissues, cells which are called lymphocytes and soluble molecules like antibodies. Next, we go on to the lymphoid tissue and its types. Now, lymphoid organs are of two types. First, we have the primary lymphoid organs which consists of thymus and the bone. Here what happens is that the lymphocytes or uh, the cells which are the key factors for fighting in our body are made here and they also mature into antigen sensitive cells. Now what happens is that these antigen sensitive cells next go to the secondary lympho lymphatic organs slash tissues. Now the secondary lymphatic organs is the place where antigen sensitive cells become effector cells. Okay, so what happens is that when the lymphocytes come to secondary lymphatic organs, what they do is that they become antigen sensitive, effect, antigen sensitive cells. Now, these antigen sensitive cells are presented with antigen and if they accept the antigen, they start to divide and they become the effector cells. And next we have the different types of cells which are produced from the lymphocyte precursors. Now, as you can see in this flowchart, all of these cells which are maturing in the T thymus, right? The T cells allow all uh, perform the cell mediated immunity, which is around 70 to 80 percent of the body immune system. Okay, and the B cells, which you see, they are the humoral or AMI antibody mediated immunity. This makes up around 10 to 20 percent of our immunity. Next, we have the antibody structure. Now, the antibody is made up of uh, four structures, you can say. Two light and two dark chains. Now, what these chains are, are basically proteins. As one of the end has COO- or the oic acid ion and the other end will be having NH3 plus ions. Now, what happens here is that the antibodies are connected by disulfide bonds. The light and the dark are also connected by the disulfide bond as shown in the figure. Now there is another thing which you should remember is that 
there are variable regions and there are constant regions the variable regions are near the tip or tip of the y you can say and these are the places where antigen go to bind okay next we have the different types of immunoglobulins or antibodies now the best way to remember this is via this table right here next we go on to vaccination and immunization and in this topic one of the things you should remember is that of recombinant dna technology so what this recombinant dna technology does is basically is that it helps in larger large scale production of uh, vaccines which are quite hard to make and they do this by providing using pathogens like uh, the transgenic yeast in hepatitis B vaccine to basically uh, manufacture the vaccine for them. Another thing you should remember is that vaccines are based on the idea of the memory of our immune system, which is basically the active immunity. So, next we have the HNA system, it is also called as the MHC or the major histocompatibility complex so what this basically is is that this is complex which basically uh, checks out uh, with, uh, different types of antigens in our body and they do this by with the help of macrophages so what the macrophages does have actually the macrophages have the mhc class 2 receptor on them which can be used to identify different types of antigen this is also the reason why tissue grafting may be a success or may not be a success. So if the MHC complex does not accept the organ, then it will be a failure. And if the MHC complex accepts the organ, which it does in case of family members, then it is a success. Another thing you should be knowing is that there is we are having the HLA alleles on the homologue of a chromosome number 6 and this is called as haplotype and this is the different types of grafting you can graft with yourself you can graft with other members of your family you can graft with uh, your same species and you can graft organs or anything from different species they are in the same order and rejection rate is greatest for xenograft and the final thing you should remember is that cell mediated immune disease response is responsible for the graft rejection. That is, the cells which take part in immunity are the people who are responsible for this. Next, let's move on to the immune system disorders. And let's start with allergies. So, what allergies are are basically exaggerated response to the foreign antigens which are present in our environment. And this allergic response is usually brought about by IgE and uh, the acidophils or eosinophils. Okay. So what what happens during allergy is that the mast cell, which are present in various parts of our body, secrete excess of histamine and serotonin, and this causes a lot of problems like blockage of our lungs and stuffiness and uh, nose problems and uh, running eyes and all okay and users of drugs like antihistamine uh, adrenaline and steroids quickly reduce the symptoms next we have the different types of allergic uh, problems so the first thing we have is bronchial asthma which is caused by the spasm of smooth muscles in the walls of our bronchial so what happens is that the mucus uh, which is present in the lining will start to hypersecrete and causes the blockage of the bronchioles and it's uh, it makes it harder for us to breathe. Next we have the hay fever which is the uh, allergy which affects mainly our upper respiratory system and our eyes and is quite common due to seasonal change. Finally we are having anaphylactic shock. 
and this is considered as one of the most dangerous one because this causes vasodilation and this increases the permeability of the blood vessel so blood can easily leak out of our vessels and it can cause a decrease in the blood pressure and this sudden decrease has various problems which are associated with it which, which can eventually lead to death next we have autoimmune diseases in our body now autoimmune diseases are of various types and what they basically do is that the immune system of our body starts attacking our own cells thinking it to be antigens and of course there are various types of this uh, i'll just list all of them and first we have myasthenia gravis which is the acetylcholine receptors will get damaged and this prevents the movement of neuromuscular junction and decreases the movement of muscles then you have pernicious anemia which destroys as a intrinsic factor which is secreted in stomach and it does not allow the B12 becoming B12 to be absorbed then we have Hashimoto disease which destroys the liver uh, no the thyroid gland then you have rheumatoid uh, arthritis and this uh, causes inflammation of synovial membrane and it one important thing you should remember is that it starts secreting abnormal granules which are called as pannus which cause a lot of pain and then we have insulin dependent diabetes mellitus now the beta cells in our pancreas secrete insulin and what uh, the antibodies do is they destroy them finally we have multiple sclerosis which the myelin sheath of nerve cells get destroyed finally we have some immunodeficiency diseases now these are diseases which cause a uh, decrease in the immune power of our body so they are caused by deficiency of like for example SCID is caused by the deficiency of enzyme adenosine deaminase and this enzyme is involved in maturation of T and B lymphocytes also this thing was the first uh, disease against which gene therapy was used and it was used for a four year old uh, four year old girl and it was successful and then we also have AIDS which is included in this category which is acquired so therefore it is secondary immune deficiency next we have cancer now for cancer one of the key things you should be remembering is the oncogenic transformation now this oncogenic transformation is the root cause for this now oncogenic transformation usually what happens is that when the normal cell is dividing so they undergo mitosis and all However, what happens is sometimes the mitosis is uncontrolled and it becomes abnormal and it, um, it becomes excessive mitotic division and this phenom phenomenon is called as cancer. Now cancer is also of two types. The first one is benign growth and in this what happens is that the property of a normal cell that is the contact inhibition is shown and it does not allow the mitosis to continue if it touches another cell correct fine so what happens in malignant tumor is that this contact inhibition is not followed at all and it causes the cancerous cell to travel all across the body also this is called as metastasis and this is the most feared property of malignant tumors next we have the different types of cancer now cancerous types now first let's start with carcinoma carcinomas are ca uh, cancer of epithelial tissue like the skin and the inner lining of our organs and they are actually the major type of all tumors around 85 percent and they are divided into various forms as shown now there is another type of cancer which is called as sarcoma sarcoma is the cancer of connective tissue of our body so whichever tissues which are mesodermal in origin like the bones like the lymph node like the blood vessels all of them suffer from this finally we have leukemia and lymphomas which are the tumors of blood cells they are divided into two parts the first one is chronic my my myelogenous leukemia and the second is Burkitt's lymphoma finally we talk about some genes that affect cancer Usually in the normal cell, what happens is that there is this gene by the name of proto-oncogenes and these proto-oncogenes are the reason why contact inhibition occurs 
and there's also another gene which is called as tumor suppressor gene and there's also the suicide genes however what happens is during the oncogenic transformation after the oncogenic transformation the proto oncogene will convert into oncogene and this does not stop the contact inhibition it does not uh, perform the contact inhibition and also after this happens the tumor suppressor gene and suicide genes become ineffective at stopping the tumor and this is what causes cancer finally we speak about the detection and the treatment of cancer for detecting cancer there are various ways you can try a blood examination you can try doing a biopsy you can try doing the fnac which is fine needle aspiration cytology uh, in case of uh, breast cyst slash tumor then you also have the pap smear for cervical uh, carcinoma you can do an x-ray ct and mri scans and the most safest of all of these is a mri scan then you have and modern techniques which involve on antibodies against cancer specific antigens and there is also the molecular biology which can be applied applied to detect genes in individuals with which genes which cause uh, hereditary uh, cancers so how do we treat cancer now treatment of cancer can be done by various methods the first one is by surgery or removing the tumor entirely then we have the radiation therapy which uses cobalt co30 and there is also the iodine therapy which uses iodine 131 and these x rays are given into the to the site of the tumor to stop the kill the kill the growth and you can also use some chemotherapic uh, drugs like vincristine and vincristin and also toxol which is obtained from taxus buccata most of the common ways of treating cancer cancer uses all three of the above methods then finally you also have some immunotherapeutic method like the usage of monoclonal antibodies and there's also a can cancer vaccine being created finally let's move on to the final topic of aids aids is caused by a virus by the name of hiv which causes problem to the immune system by attaching itself to T helper cells and this attachment and uh, sub subsequent takeover of the functioning of the cell causes a decrease in our immune power and which basically causes HIV. Finally we have to remember the structure of HIV itself. Now HIV as you can see has a lot of layers, a lot of envelopes. Now these envelopes should be memorized GP120, GP41, GP17 and GP24. You should memorize them. And another thing you should memorize is the presence of two single stranded RNA inside the capsule. This is the only animal attacking virus which is having RNA and it is an exception. Finally, you should remember this cycle and you should remember the steps which it follows. Now, how do we detect HIV virus? Now, HIV can be detected by the help of a test by the name of ELISA test. However, ELISA test is also used for the, a wide variety of diseases like pregnancy, AIDS, STDs, thyroid disorders, hepatitis, rubella, etc. To confirm the presence of HIV, what we do is another test by the name of Western blot which detects antibodies in patient's serum. Finally, we have the treatment of HIV. So, as you remember, in the previous diagram, we saw that the diagram had three structures in it. One was integrase, and the second was protease, and the third was reverse transcriptase. You should remember these three as what happens in the treatment of uh, HIV is that they basically inhibit all these functions to occur. So, 
the reverse transcript test does not work, the protease does not work, and the integrase does not work in the HIV cell. And this only slows down the process of death as HIV is not curable. Finally, you should remember about NACO, which is the organization, uh, non governmental organization, which is helping in treating of AIDS. Finally, we have a huge list and features of various types of diseases. And you should remember all of them, and they are very important. I have also attached a Excel link having the different types of questions. Uh, frequently asked questions and mistakes which I have made you can check them out and hopefully uh, there's another video explaining how to use them properly okay? uh, what these pictures are are some notes which I had made so that I can easily remember the disease names if you can understand them well and good if you don't just ignore them and stick to the material and follow it to the team